Hi there, y'all. I'm Tom, and this is Empty Pantry Entrees, a place where you can come to learn all the skills you need to make delicious creations from only the odds and ends in your pantry. We're making ratatouille. God, did it get brighter in the background. On the real though, ratatouille is really not all that difficult. Just a homemade tomato sauce, some carefully sliced veggies, and then a fair bit of time in the oven, and you've got yourself a dinner that is sure to impress. If anything, your guests are just gonna be happy that you made rat food. Ready food. But with that being said, I think it's about time for us to move on. We're starting off today's dinner with the roasted garlic for our eventual garlic bread. If you want a home roast yours, you'll take two cloves and slice open to reveal the top. Then drizzle with a touch of olive oil, salt, and pepper. Rub them together to really grind in that salt layer in, and then wrap it all up in foil, toss in a small baking tin to catch the runoff oil, and then into the oven it goes at 400 Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. Up next is the veggie slicing, which is infinitely easier with a mandolin. Cut out a flat end, then slide your squash down into the set guillotine piece. Aim for about an eighth of an inch thick slice. Slice your way through about two yellow squashes, and take care to use the slicing guard when you get low. That knife is super easy to cut your finger. Other than that, it's a pretty satisfying tool to use. Sadly though, our Roma tomatoes turn into more of a mush when run through the mandolin, too high of a water content and not enough structural rigidity to counterbalance it. Again, about an eighth of an inch thick slices, cutting into about six Roma tomatoes in total. Layer these out on a baking tray so that they're easier to keep together in the long run. And now, Tom from the future just wants to pop in and say, yeah, zucchini by all means should be in this ratatouille dish. Handle it exactly the same as the yellow squash, about one to two zucchini sliced about to an eighth of an inch thickness on the mandolin, and then you're good to go. But unfortunately for me, the three nearest grocery stores to me were all sold out of zucchini when I was going to shop for this recipe. Major bummer. We'll do our best without it. Back to the past me. Also, if you can get your hands on a confetti or Chinese eggplant variety, those babies are prime candidates for mandolin use. They're much better than the fat and rotund varieties that pull a lot of resistance into the slicer. To correct for this, I went with a standard knife slice of about an eighth of an inch thick, but cut each circle down into fourths, just so that each length was around as long as the squash and tomato. On the electric top, we've got the cast iron set over a medium high heat and a bit of olive oil. Once it's simmering our test piece of garlic, we'll pour in one small white onion diced, as well as one red and yellow bell pepper diced. About a tablespoon of garlic mince, and then a hefty pour of black pepper. Keep things moving to avoid burning on the bottom, and add in a couple shakes of red pepper flakes for spicy. Then, making a divot in the center, cut the heat and pour in your 28 ounce can of San Marzano tomatoes. Just bringing things up to temperature at this point, so the residual heat on the cast iron is plenty. Scoop that all into a blender bucket and send it over to Chop City. And like that, you've got a beautiful tomato sauce base to work with. Back on over to a low heat, you'll simmer away until reduced by about a quarter. And along the way, taste for seasoning. I'm going with about half a teaspoon of paprika and an indiscriminate amount of red pepper flakes, a splash of white vinegar for vibrance, and finally, a buttload of dried basil is getting mixed in. And simmer over a real gentle heat. Don't want any aggressive bubbles throwing sauce everywhere. Just make sure to siphon off about a cup or so of the sauce for plating before you get to layering. It really doesn't matter what order you go in, so long as you're consistent with your pattern. Place your veggies along the outer ring and make your way around the cast iron. This is what makes a ratatouille a true labor of love. But I will say, it does have a sort of relaxing nature to it, with the sort of repetitive stacking motions. And the end result is a picture-perfect piece for sure. To top your veggies off, mix one part dried basil and one part dried parsley with about half a teaspoon of garlic powder and a tablespoon or so of olive oil. Mixing just until it comes together and then sprinkle it over the top of your pretty plate. Then wrap her up like a present with aluminum foil and then send her on over to the first round of the oven at 400 Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes to steam those veggies. This gives us plenty of time to make up our compound butter for the garlic bread. That roasted garlic is now gonna be squeezed out of the garlic cloves. These ones probably could have used another five to 10 minutes in the oven just based on the resistance I get. Mix that up with a half a stick of butter and a bit of dried basil and parsley. And the bread here is a super simple store-bought baguette. Nothing crazy here. Slice it into small boats, and then smear on your compound butter. Hit it with a bit of grated parmesan, and then set on a baking tray ready for the oven. After 40 minutes, you're going to take the foil off your cast iron and watch out for those intense steam clouds. 
After that is about 20 more minutes in the 400 Fahrenheit oven to wilt the veggies, and in the last 10 minutes or so, your garlic bread goes in. For plating, scoop in a small pool of your siphoned off tomato sauce, then pinch and pile your veggies on top. If you have a ring mold, you can get the classic Disney look. Just make sure you sprinkle on a little bit more basil because you can never have enough of it, and then some grated parm to finish things off. For a fully vegetarian dinner, this ratatouille honestly brings a whole lot of savory to the table. Very picturesque and very fun to make, especially when you've got company coming over. Just make sure to provide ample warning for those tomatoes. Those suckers are notorious for burning the tops of mouths. This video was the highest voted for in the comment poll last time around, which means that the next one is pinned below in the comments. Let me know what you want to see or suggest your own recipe. For now, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.